Greetings friends and welcome to the weekend video. So happy to have you along here in my den with me. Hope you all had a wonderful week and uh, are enjoying the start of your weekend. I'd like to thank you all for uh, spending some of the time on your weekend with me. So, reserve spice. Reserve spice and everything nice. Mm, 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 mm. Oh, such a wonderful scent that is is mm -mm -mm. and is their take on Schulten Old Spice and they did a wonderful job going with the Masetto find the logo there the Masetto 30 millimeter three band badger and that's what we're going to use to uh whip up this soap today absolutely love this one uh I've tried a few of the uh, Barrister's Reserve scents. I've tried uh, Fern. I really like that. I've tried Classic. I really like that. I have Cool that I found the sample of. I have to get to. And this is the only full tub I have. And mm, 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 that's my favorite one. And definitely my favorite one out of all of them. I've never smelled real Schulten Old Spice. But based on, you know, the reviews I've seen from other people that have smelled the real deal, this is, like, the best out of all of them. And I have tried Sterling. I liked Sterling's version as well once I got it lathered up. But I think this one just edges it out just, just by the tiniest bit. And I am a sucker for that vintage Old Spice smell. I really, really like it. Probably one of my favorite scent profiles. If I had to pick like a top five of scent profiles, this would be in it for sure. Speaking of top fives, I do have to get to my uh, five soaps I couldn't live without. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Maybe I might do that Monday. As we get this lathered up. So I get it fishing Thursday. It was uh, interesting. Uh, I did not catch anything. I got up kind of late, and then my wife had to do groceries in the afternoon or late in the afternoon. So I, I got out for a couple hours, but I didn't go to the original spot I was going to go to, which probably would have been a better spot. But I also knew it was probably going to be packed due to being opening day. So I went to my backup spot, and my backup spot, it's promising, but it also kind of sucks because fishing from the bank, there's a lot of reeds and bulrushes and stuff which i ended up getting tangled in a lot so i definitely had tight lines um tight lines from from entanglement uh i still had fun though uh you know i was able to kind of figure out my shortcomings with the vision i can't I, I can't really see where my line is going through the air and where it's landing in the water so that's kind of a bummer but, you know, if I'm fishing, if I'm going to be fishing, you know, ponds, stuff like that, I'll just hopefully be away from people or don't worry about getting lines tangled and encroaching other people's areas and I can just, you know, bomb it out in front of me. Uh, my casting was very poor to begin with because I kind of forgot how to do it. I have my brand new bait caster that I bought two years ago and rigged up and have never taken to a body of water and I could not cast that at all and then it dawned on me finally what I was doing wrong after I got home or part of what I was doing wrong I was releasing the bale on the bait caster but wasn't holding the spool and that'll just let the line start falling off so I basically I was, I was casting like a toddler learning how to fish my line was going nowhere um but was still, after I figured that out, I was still struggling. So after we get home, uh, we have a park behind us. It has a, a trail and a big wide open field. And then it's like literally right behind the house. So I went over there with my youngest kid. And uh, he was kind of helping be my eyes. And I just put a sinker on. And was just casting the sinker. And then I got the hang of it. I was bombing that out. Uh, so hopefully... 
when I go fishing next, I'll be able to cast my lures just as easily. The whole reason about the bait caster, and I know people will laugh, but there is there is a method behind the madness. I bought it for being able to cast trout spinners further. Because I used to do a lot of river fishing and a lot of uh, a lot of big pond fishing. So I'll still be doing a lot of big pond fishing. Um, so using a spinner on on a spinning rod is great if you're you know at a stream and you're just pitching it out a few feet and then letting the current take it and then casting it back or, or retrieving it back to you and letting the spinner do the work but you can't cast very far so if you're at a bigger body of water you need to get that line out there and spinners just don't work with those super light lures or at least mine doesn't the way my spinners rigged up so that's about the bait caster for us to get those light spinners out where i want them a razor for today the gold 500 chic golden 500 what what a beautiful piece of machinery that is see if you can get that Golden 500 in there. Come on, focus. Focus. Beautiful razor. Beautiful piece of kit. Um, third use on the uh, bog standard Schick injector blade that's in here. Two days of growth. And oh, oh my, that is some smooth. Oh, very smooth. Now, I'm not saying this is my goat, like it's DK's goat, because I've only gotten, this is only the third shave. But as it stands right now, this razor is in my top three. Absolutely love this injector now kind of hard to find so if you can't find a golden 500 just look for the J series so the J series will have this handle this longer handle on it but if the handle doesn't really bother you if you don't need this long the longer handle or one that looks like this just look for the Ever sharp ever sharp hydro magic and you will get this exact same head because the head on the J series and the hydro magic are the same it's this exact head that same configuration the golden 500 is just a fancy version of the ever sharp hydro magic head in the J series with the J series handle. So little little tip for you if you were trying to find one. You know, if, if I came across a J4, which is the silver uh, or nickel plated Ever Sharp Hydro Magic, so the, uh, the so identical to this just uh, with the same handle and uh just silver plated. If I found one for a good price, I'd jump all over that. 100% I would great great shaving razors so we carry on with this shave great performance out of this soap absolutely loving the scent on this mm, i should almost get the uh, the matching splash and we'll go across so planning on getting out tuesday again to go fishing on my wife's next day off and hopefully we'll go to the spot i was going to go because uh, it's a nice pond Looks like you can fish from the shore with relative ease if you have to. There's also a dock you can fish from if there's nobody else there on it. And then hopefully I'll get that, uh, I'll get my be able to use the bait caster, try that for a while, then hopefully I'll be able to uh, cast my spinning rod with ease.
which I should be able to now that I kind of figured out where I messed up, even with my spinning rod. I, I do a side cast. And I was bringing it towards, I was bringing it back and then just kind of pausing and then going to cast it. And that's like pretty much completely wrong, especially if you're not using a whole lot of weight. Now I got rigged up as a Carolina rig, so an inline uh, sinker and then a swivel. And then that uh, I got a snap swivel on so I can just attach pre-made leaders with hooks just to make it easier for my eyes. I don't have to mess around too much. And uh, anyway, I was having a hell of a time throwing that, but I re I, I'll come to realize after I got home that, you know, I kind of forgot what I was doing when you're casting. It has to be all one motion. You can't pause at the back. You got to bring it back. And as soon as you bring it back, you load up the tip and you fling it. So just little things like that you forget. When you haven't done it for a while. But I didn't, uh, I actually didn't break off my line getting snagged yesterday. And I got hung up pretty good. I lost one fake worm. <laughs> uh, I snapped, actually I snapped the leader. Which is just mono. But I have, uh, what do I have? 10 pound test braid. I think is my main line on my, uh, on my spinner. And I know some people be like, 10 pound test braid for trout fishing? And uh, my answer is yes. Because it is not, my rod is not really geared up for what I'm fishing for. It's geared up for what I might catch. So like I said, I'm used to river fishing. And river fishing around here, it's not uncommon to get hooked into a big ass flounder. And believe me, those can be heavy sons of bitches. If you're trying to pull them in with a little six pound mono, good luck. Or you can get hooked into a big salmon. Now you can't keep salmon, it's only catch and release here, but still. I would rather be able to land it and get my trophy picture and then release it unharmed than catch it on some six pound mono and then have it snap off and have a, a fish swimming around with a, a hook and trailing line behind it. So I've always rigged up my line for the what ifs. Plus with the braid, there's a better chance that you can uh, get unstuck if you get hooked up into something. I did have to re-rake some stuff though, and that was one of the things I was worried about, was being able to do that outside. And uh, that went well. I was wearing my sunglasses, I just brought my regular glasses for the close-in work tying knots and then I was just using my regular sunglasses to see so it, it worked good so I just got to get the mechanics of the casting down again and we'll be all set and speaking of all set that was the shave and that that could be rocketing towards my number one slot unreal how well that injector shaves Unreal, especially considering you don't get to really pick your blade because uh, there's not much out there for injector blades. So that's just something. And there's something about that blade gap because injectors are going to have different blade gaps, different exposures and stuff. There's something about this J series blade gap that just really, really suits my skin. Phenomenal shave. And that just glorious scent of that Old Spice. Mm, absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. And speaking of Old Spice, let's get some Old Spice on. Now, of course, these don't completely match because this P&G, for whatever reason, they changed the scent for Old Spice. They said uh, they didn't. I've done some research on that. And P&G insists they haven't changed the scent of Old Spice. But my nose knows different. And I know lots of people who said the same thing. 
a tiny bit of tingle there, but not too bad. That was a great shake. But I know they've definitely changed the scent a little bit from the original Schulten Old Spice. Now, I don't know why. I don't know why companies have to do that. Why they have to reinvent things and reimagine things. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Such a classic, iconic scent that in my opinion, for whatever it's worth, did not need updating. It didn't need to be reinvented. It was perfect as it is. But of course, like anything in life, that is just my opinion, and I mean, what can I say? I guess I did buy the Old Spice, so, and I'll buy more if I have to, I guess. But anyway, I digress. That was the shave, so thank you so much for tuning in, uh, listening to my uh, fishing story, or lack thereof. Hopefully, hopefully Tuesday I'll have better luck. I've got this uh, fishing thing figured out. And I'll get out there and I'll snag some fresh trout for me and the wife. But anyway, hopefully you guys all have a great weekend. Uh, be safe, be kind to one another. Most importantly, have a great day and even better shave. We're going to catch you in the next one. Peace and I love you.